September 27th, Memorial of St. Vincent de Paul, Priest St. Vincent de Paul was born in Gascony in 1581. After completing his studies, he was ordained a priest and went to Paris where he served in a parish. He founded the Congregation of the Mission to, su to supervise the formation of priests and to give support to the poor. With the help of St. Louis de Marillac, he also founded the Congregation of the Daughters of Charity. He died at Paris in 1660. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. This is the feast day of the Lord's true witness, whom through the ages all have held in honor. Now let us praise him and his deeds of glory with exultation. So now in chorus, giving God the glory, we sing his praises and his mighty triumph, that in his glory we may all be sharers, here and hereafter. Praise to the Father and the Son most holy, praise to the Spirit with them co-eternal, who gives examples in the lives of all saints that we may follow. He asked to share your life, O Lord, and you have heard his prayer. You have clothed him with glory and great beauty. O Lord, your strength gives joy to the King. How your saving help makes him glad. You have granted him his heart's desire. You have not refused the prayer of his lips. You came to meet him with the blessings of success. You have set on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked you for life, and this you have given, days that will last from age to age. Your saving help has given him glory. You have laid upon him majesty and splendor. You have granted your blessings to him forever. You have made him with rejoice with the glory of your presence. The king has put his trust in the Lord. Through the mercy of the Most High, he shall stand firm. O Lord, arise in your strength. We shall sing and praise your power. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. He asked to share your life, O Lord, and you have heard his prayer. You have clothed him with glory and great beauty. The path of the just is like the passage of the dawn. It grows from first light to the full splendor of day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your truth in the watches of the night, on the ten-stringed lyre and the lute, with the murmuring sound of the harp. Your deeds, O Lord, have made me glad. For the work of your hands I shout with joy. O Lord, how great are your works, how deep are your designs. The foolish man cannot know this, and the fool cannot understand. Though the wicked spring up like grass and all who do evil thrive, they are doomed to be eternally destroyed. But you, Lord, are eternally on high. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The path of the just is like the passage of the dawn. It grows from first light to the full, full splendor of day. The just man will flourish like the palm tree. He will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. See how your enemies perish. All doers of evil are scattered. To me you give the wild ox's strength. You anoint me with the purest oil. My eyes looked in triumph on my foes. My ears heard gladly of their fall. The just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God, still bearing fruit when they are old, still full of sap, still green, to proclaim that the Lord is just. In him, my rock, there is no wrong. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The just man will flourish like the palm tree. He will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. The Lord led this holy man along a sure path. He showed him the kingdom of God. A reading from the first letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Set your hearts on the greater gifts. Now I will show you the way which surpasses all others. If I speak with human tongues and angelic as well, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong. A clinging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and, with full knowledge, comprehend all mysteries, if I have faith great enough to move mountains, 
but have not love, I am nothing. If I give everything I have to feed the poor and hand over my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, it does not put on airs, it is not snobbish. Love is never rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not prone to anger, neither does it brood over injuries. Love does not rejoice in what is wrong, but rejoices with the truth. There is no limit to love's forbearance, to its trust, its hope, its power to endure. Love never fails. Prophecies will cease, tongues will be silent, knowledge will pass away. Our knowledge is imperfect and our prophesying is imperfect. When the perfect comes, the imperfect will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways aside. Now we see indistinctly, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. My knowledge is imperfect now. Then I shall know even as I am known. There are, in the end, three things that last. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. We have put all our hope in God's love for us. Those who live in love, live in God. God lives in them. Let us love one another, for love is from God. Those who live in love, live in God. God lives in them. A reading from a writing by St. Vincent de Paul, priest. Even though the poor are often rough and unrefined, we must not judge them from external appearances, nor from the mental gifts they seem to have received. On the contrary, if you consider the poor in the light of faith, then you will observe that they are taking the place of the Son of God, who chose to be poor. Although in his passion he almost lost the appearance of a man, and was considered a fool by the Gentiles and a stumbling block by the Jews, he showed them that his mission was to preach to the poor. He sent me to preach the good news to the poor. We also ought to have the same spirit and imitate Christ's actions, that is, We must take care of the poor, console them, help them, support their cause. Since Christ willed to be born poor, he chose for himself disciples who were poor. He made himself the servant of the poor and shared their poverty. He went so far as to say that he would consider every deed, which either helps or harms the poor, as done for or against himself. Since God surely loves the poor, he also loves those who love the poor. For when one person holds another dear, he also includes in his affection anyone who loves or serves the one he loves. That is why we hope that God will love us for the sake of the poor. So when we visit the poor and needy, we try to be understanding where they are concerned. We sympathize with them so fully that we can echo Paul's words, I have become all things to all men. Therefore, we must try to be stirred by our neighbor's worries and distress. We must beg God to pour into our hearts sentiments of pity and compassion and to fill them again and again with these dispositions. It is our duty to prefer the service of the poor to everything else and to offer such service as quickly as possible. If a needy person requires medicine or other help during prayer time, do whatever has to be done with peace of mind. Offer the deed to God as your prayer. Do not become upset or feel guilty because you interrupted your prayer to serve the poor. God is not neglected if you leave him for such service. One of God's works is merely interrupted so that another can be carried out. So when you leave prayer to serve some poor person, remember that this very service is performed for God. Charity is certainly greater than any rule. Moreover, all rules must lead to charity. Since she is a noble mistress, we must do whatever she commands. With renewed devotion, then, we must serve the poor, especially outcasts and beggars. They have been given to us as our masters and patrons. Though I am not bound to anyone, I became a slave to all. To the weak, I became weak. I became all things to all men, that I might at least save some. I was eyes for the blind and feet for the lame. I was a father to the poor. 
I became all things to all men, that I might at least save some. Let us pray. God our Father, you gave Vincent de Paul the courage and holiness of an apostle for the well-being of the poor and the formation of the clergy. Help us to be zealous in continuing his work. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks.